Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. And thank you for taking a look at another program of a greater understanding. We're so proud to be here in the great city of Flint, Michigan. Uh, it's the city of my birth and also Miss Emily. That's right. Yes. And uh, you see that uh, Brother Wayne is not with us. However, uh, we are going to talk about today how many times did our Lord Jesus Christ bleed for you? And stay tuned. Very interesting. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. And thank you for uh, uh, viewing another program of A Greater Understanding. I'm Reverend Lawrence Adele Sifa with Cities of Hope Ministry, and to my left is... Emily Jane Palka. Yes, and uh, she is sitting in for Wayne Tierney. Uh, keep Wayne in prayer. Uh, he is having a bit of a problem with walking, although he's healthy in every other way. Uh, call him at 810-919-2540. That's 810-919-2540. And call him and pray with him. Pray with him. Uh, I know there's a lot of prayer warriors out there. Our Lord was a prayer warrior. Uh, every time he did and before he did something, he would pray to the Father. Uh, today we're going to talk about how many times did our Lord Jesus Christ plead for you. But before we get started... I'd just like to let you know, uh, my mother, Nabiha Sifa, who came to Flint at the age of 17, that was in 1953, she arrived in Flint, Michigan on uh, September 5th, 1953, and uh, I came in to this country on an airplane from Lebanon, Beirut, Lebanon, uh, actually, uh, she was born in uh, a country that she loved. She was uh, going to be an English teacher. And uh, uh, what happened was uh, she was bequeathed to my father, Nassib Joseph Sifa, on uh, November 17th, 1952. Um, and when she arrived, 30 days later, I arrived at St. Joseph Hospital here in the great city of Flint, Michigan. Uh, Miss Emily, what hospital were you born in? Well, St. Joseph Hospital. <laughs> yeah, it's no longer around. However, uh, it's the Genesis uh, Hurley Regional Cancer Center. And uh, it is serving the community in medical ways. But uh, let's first talk about what we do. Uh, Brother Wayne and I, uh, naturally, a uh, greater understanding, and keep him in prayer that he'll be here soon shortly. Uh, until then, Miss Emily Jane Pelka will, will sit in for her for him. Also, uh, we, as you know, have a podcast that airs from 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock every Tuesday, uh, Eastern Standard Time. And we are thanking you that you, you know where that is. Share this podcast with everyone that you, your family, your friends, and all your enemies. And the reason, share it with your enemies is because your enemies just might become your brother or sister in Christ. Uh, we want to also thank All Points TV uh, and uh, John Wilson, 
and Steve Myers for allowing us to preach the gospel to the world. Today's program is being dedicated to my father, Nassib Joseph Sifa, who uh, was born July 20th, 1919. Uh, he laid, was laid to rest on uh, March 7th, 1991. And from that March 7th, 1991, till approximately Friday of last week, which is November 11th, uh, him and my mother were separated. I knew they were both believers, they were both Christians, and uh, they had not just a religion, but a relationship with God. My mother was born uh, August 9th, 1936, and she been laid to rest um, on March 11th, 19, or two, 20, uh, 2022. And this broadcast is being dedicated to them, to their lives. Uh, they were in many organizations, too numerous to mention. Uh, they were both, uh, uh, well, my, my father was in World War II in South Pacific, fought uh, under General MacArthur, and uh, he said he would have went to hell and back for General MacArthur. Uh, you see the cap that I have on? Uh, it says, Stand Strong, and there are four stars on it. Uh, to give you an understanding of the stars, uh, you can be a three-star general and not be in a theater of war. But once you have four stars, like my hat, you're in a theater of war. And in, inside each of those stars is a cross, a cross where our Lord was crucified, shed his blood for us, which leads into our study. Our study. And, uh, but before... I just wanted to let you know on, on uh, Tuesday night we have a uh, Bible study. That Bible study uh, is a phone Bible study. And uh, it's, what we're going to talk about this, the topic tonight is warning of false teachers. It's something that we all need to know, whether a teacher is truthful or false. And uh, we don't want to sit under false teachers. Uh, it, first of all, it, it is not good for our mind or eyes to see anything that is unholy, wicked, or evil. Isn't that right, Sister Emily? That's correct. And uh, we need to always have the Holy Spirit that lives inside us. Once we receive Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, uh, the Holy Spirit that lives inside us will give us discernment as to whether that spirit that's speaking to us, that individual is speaking to us, uh, is speaking on the part of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Father, or the enemy, Satan. And uh, that's going to be a good study, warning uh, of false teachers. And you can dial in 701-802-5180. That's 701-802-5180. And that is every Tuesday night at 6 o'clock Eastern Standard Time to 7.30. And uh, then you're going to be requested to put the uh, access code. The access code is 6344132 pound. Now get your pencils or pens and mark this down. 701-802-5180 and when the access code is requested a 6344132 pound and you're on the Bible study. And it's every Tuesday, every Tuesday from 6 to 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, also there is a on the ground Bible study that is conducted under Mount Hermon Ministries. And that Bible study is at Lincoln Park Community Church right here in the great city of Flint, Michigan. And if you'd like to attend anywhere, uh, you, can, you can fly in, drive in, take a bus. Uh, it, is, it starts at 5 o'clock till about 8. Uh, at about <clears throat> 6.15, there's also a podcast that uh, Brother Larry and Stephanie Razik conduct under the terms of Mount Hermon Ministries, of which I was the uh, founder, and they are right now uh, preaching the true gospel. And that address is seven, for those of you that want to attend, 742 Newbert, N-E-U-B-E-R-T Avenue, Flint, Michigan, 48507. That is 742 Newbert Avenue, Flint, Michigan, 48507. And that is Lincoln Park Community Church. And we want to thank Pastors uh, Steve and Katrina Bentley for allowing us 
to use their church uh, for the purposes of a Bible study, on the ground Bible study in the great city of Flint, Michigan. And Flint, Michigan is going to be ushering in one of the largest end time revivals in the history of the world. It is happening now as we speak. Uh, some of us think, well, I don't see the Lord moving. Well, the Lord is moving. Uh, just like when Elijah was at the top of the mountain, all of his enemies were around him. He had his servant with him and just him and his servant. And uh, he told his servant, there are more for us than against us. And the servant says, where? And he prayed that the servant's scales of his eyes would drop. And he's seen thousands and thousands of angels uh, in the spiritual world that is moving. Everything that happens in our physical world uh, happens first in the spiritual world. Isn't that right, Miss Emily? That's correct. Yes. And um, you're welcome to attend that. Oh, by the way, uh, this Thursday, which will be in a few days, uh, she's having corned beef and cabbage soup and all the fixings. And you're all welcome to come. Be there at 5 o'clock so that you can reserve your seat uh, for that great feast. They always feed people just before the podcast. And uh, that's every Thursday also. Also on Saturday uh, at noon till uh, 12.15, we are on, Brother Wayne and I, what is called WSNL, which is a radio program that is aired in our area to Flint, Saginaw, Bay City, Midland. And uh, it's called WSNL. How do you find it? You put it on your smartphone, WSNL, Christian Talk. And you can uh, put that link. That link has been sent as far away as Afghanistan. And people in Afghanistan are listening to our radio program at 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time here uh, in the Genesis County, which is Genesee County, Genesis County, because God wants to do a new thing. And also... Uh, it is aired on Sunday at 1 o'clock. So you're, you can take a look at that. Uh, the topic uh, is I'm doing a 12-week series on Saturday, every Saturday and Sunday at 1 o'clock, on the 12 minor prophets. Now, they're minor only because of the size of their book, ladies and gentlemen. The thing is, uh, they have a major meaning. Their, their message is the same today as it was back when they were written. And we're going to be discussing the prophet Habakkuk. So uh, you can tune in uh, to uh, WSNL at uh, 12 o'clock on Sunday or 1 o'clock on, uh, on Sunday, 12 o'clock on Saturday to listen to that. So uh, also uh, Bishop Fisher and uh, Pastor Faye Fisher are heading up a prayer meeting every Saturday at Unity of Faith Church, which is just around the corner from Lincoln Park, and that address is 3531 uh, Fenton Road, Flint, Michigan, 48507. That's 3531 Fenton Road, Flint, Michigan, 48507. And it's a prayer session to usher in the largest end-time revival in the history of the world, starting in Flint, going to Genesee County, going to State of Michigan, going to the United States, going to the North American continent, and going to the world. Uh, we have people coming from all over the world here to uh, Flint, Michigan, and Genesis County, uh, which is known Genesee County, and uh, people are coming from all over the world for this largest end-time revival. This revival will be the largest revival in the history of the world, uh, larger than Azusa Street, larger than Brownsville, and it will continue until our Lord comes and raptures us out of here. According to uh, Revelation, there are four more uh, prophecies that have to happen uh, with our world. One is the rapture that will happen. Uh, two is the, um, the tribulation that will happen. The rapture, some people think, will happen after the tribulation. Uh, that's something that we can question our Lord and Savior when we all get to heaven. Uh, I know that my mom and dad know the truth and because they're there. Uh, the other night, uh, it was Saturday night, Friday night when I went to sleep, I had a vision from the Lord because my heart was heavy of my mom and father, my father and my mother, dancing in heaven at the age of 25 to 30. 
They were both very young looking. They were both happy and elated and uh, doesn't ease the pain. Also, uh, I mentioned that, that, uh, that we're going to be studying Habakkuk. So let's get to our program. Uh, how many times did Jesus bleed for us? Uh, some people think it was just once when he went to the cross. But there are seven times that he bled for us. And his blood, blood was very pr uh, precious. It is the Father's blood. Uh, some people think that, that that blood is not stained with Adam's sin uh, that we have on our bodies. But when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, uh, what happens is a physical change in our body as well as our spirit mm -hmm. becomes sealed, right? Yes, that's true. Sister Stephanie, or Emily. Sister Emily. And, and what happens is uh, that physical change happens and we become in Christ and he becomes in us. Okay, so the first time, let's look at the seven times. The first time uh, the sweating of blood in the Garden of Gethsemane, and it's found in Luke 22. Could you read that for us, Sister uh, Emily? Luke 22, 40 through 44, if you want to get your Bibles out. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye entered not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was as if were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. You know, the thing is, uh, Jesus was a prayer warrior. He was obedient even unto death, even the death and shame of the death on the cross. Um, and that was the first time that he bled when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. His disciples were with him. And uh, he went away to pray because he knew when he did his first miracle, public miracle, Mm -hmm. Which was what, Sister Emily? Changing the water into wine. At a wedding in Canaan. Yeah, Jesus celebrated. Yes, he celebrated, he danced, he laughed. And uh, he changed the water to wine. And after that first public miracle, he knew that the clock was ticking to the cross. And cousin, St. John the Baptist said when he was about to baptize Jesus, he says, ah, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. The sin of the world. And what is sin? Sin is nothing but not doing God's best. Not doing God's best. And that's what we are working towards. Right, Sister Emily? That's correct. Okay. The next time that Jesus bled was in John 19.1. And it was the stripes on Jesus' back and shedding of blood at the time he was scourged before he went to the cross he was scourged by Pontius Pilate and what is that uh, John 19 1 John 19 1 then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him took Jesus and scourged him do you want me to read go ahead number two yes and the soldiers placed a crown of thorns and put it on his head and they put on him a purple robe. And they said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him with their hands. They beat our Lord. They said, uh, uh, Sister Emily, that he looked so bad that we couldn't recognize him. That's pretty bad. He was bad. just like a piece of meat when they hung him on the cross. It wasn't the way Hollywood had, or uh, uh, even Mel Gibson when he did the Passion of the Christ movie, um, that he was... <laughs> unrecognizable. Unrecognizable. 
and he said that wasn't so totally because they couldn't put that on the screen. Now we have Isaiah 53 5. Um, I have it. Could here. you read that? Isaiah 53 5. And, and it has our healing is in this. Go ahead. And he was wounded for our transgressions, and he was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. With his stripes we are healed. He took 39 stripes. And you know how God, the Father, is such a mathematician? Mm -hmm. There are 39, and those of you out there that are in the medical profession, 39 major characteristics of disease. That's correct. Isn't that amazing? And he took one stripe for each one. We received our healing. Well, the other day someone asked me. Uh, they says, uh, when did you receive your healing, Reverend Lawrence? And I says, about 2,000 years ago, when Jesus took those 39 stripes. And that's the third time that he was, um, he was shed his blood. He was bruised and suffered internal bleeding from being beaten. And that's in Isaiah 53, 5. Now the fourth time, okay, we're, we're, we're leading up to the fourth time, uh, the seven, it says, the shedding of blood when uh, receiving the crown of thorns upon his head. Oh. And that's in John 19, 2. Isn't the Bible wonderful? Uh, it has, we have to mine the Bible as you mine gold. And uh, every word, every word is a picture of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And you'll get the opportunity uh, if you are so, uh, how would you say, uh, willing to receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Our Lord doesn't force salvation on anyone. Reverend Lawrence. Yes. Sometimes people think these little thorns were like, like oh, maybe a half an inch long. These are long thorns, and they are shaped into a, uh, like a circle, intertwined. This is a terrible, terrible thing to have placed on your head. And they pushed down. Into his skull. Yes. It was a horrible, horrible thing. And verse 2 says, And the soldiers placed a crown of thorns and put on his head and they put on him a purple robe. They were mocking him. Yeah. You know, purple is the color of royal. Yes. Do you know that uh, Canaan, which is where my father and mother's family come from, our family, and it was the promised land, and uh, the Phoenicians yes. were after that. And you know what they're, they produce for the the world what purple dye so That's that they amazing. Can create purple robe yeah and clothes in that it's royal purple um, also they have in lebanon uh the cedars of lebanon mm -hmm. the timbers of the cedars of lebanon were used to build solomon david's um and also the temple where uh god tabernacled uh with the hebrews uh with Man, mm -hmm. yes, and the Temple of Solomon was built with timbers from the cedars of Lebanon. Okay, and they were fluted with gold and silver. So, uh, the the this here, I've been told the crown that went uh, was stuck into Jesus's head. He was a hundred percent God and a hundred percent man. He was tempted and felt pain and joy just like we do. That's correct. The Creator became the creation. To save the creation. Save the creation. And what happened was I heard that if you, you study it out, that the thorns were the end of curse. It conquered curses in the world. The first curse that we had uh, was given to Adam. And because Adam and woman sinned, she wasn't Eve until Adam named her in Genesis 2, 7, but uh, Adam named every one of the animals. The, the thing was that 
that the curse was that the Lord told Adam that since you have sinned, that you'll till the soil that you came from. We were made from the soil, the miry clay, the dust of the earth. And you'll till it. Was he a farmer? Yes, he was a farmer. You'll till it in great pain. Yes. Great pain. And that was the first curse. So, uh, the shedding of blood when he received the crown was Jesus' fourth time that he bled for us. And the fifth time, bleeding, was the shedding through Jesus' pierced hands. We want to read in Matthew 27, 35. Now, Matthew was the youngest of the disciples. He was a tax collector. Uh, him and Peter didn't get along. Neither the other disciples. Matthew had all the luxuries. He didn't study the Torah uh, like the other Jewish boys. Uh, Peter was older than all of them. He was over 20 years of age. And how do we know? Is that when Peter questioned our Lord, uh, after a while he said that our Lord, he said, I was told that our rabbi, our Lord, our master does not pay the temple tax. So Jesus, to show the Pharisees, he told Peter, he says, throw a line into the sea and catch a fish and take the gold coin out of the fish's mouth and pay the temple tax for you and for me. Well, many of us think that all the 12 disciples were old men. You see how the Renaissance pictured them as all old men. Uh, the positioning was on his right side you had John, which was one of the sons of thunder, the sons of Zebedee, and he coined himself as the disciple that Jesus loved, as if he didn't love all of them. And James sat on his left. On his right side, after uh, uh, John, was Peter. And uh, Peter was, you know, the little rock. And on his left side, his left side, was the treasurer. And who was that? Judas. Judas Iscariot. And Judas the left treasurer. him. Yes, yes. So he left him where? What did he do? What was Judas's, his, his, his job was to care for the money, right? That's right. Care for the purse. And Jesus sent him wherever he needed to send money to different people. Um, Jesus had 12 men that he walked with for three and a half years. Provided for them, their families, mm -hmm. and also their extended families. That's correct. And uh, people say that he was poor. Well, yeah, Jesus became poor so that we could become rich. Is just that he became a man. That's how his poverty. He left his gold crown and all his authority and things in heaven and came and bent, became the creator. Jesus was very rich. Do you know that in all the times that I've read in the Bible, I never remember Jesus asking for money? No. Did he go and borrow money? No. <laughs> they didn't have mortgages back then. Maybe they did have mortgages. The only time he. he uh, asked for something there was a, about 10,000 people he asked if anybody had a lunch there's one little boy out of all those people that had a lunch and boy did he oh when he had the the the, the five yeah. loaves and two fishes yes. a two-piece fish dinner right oh boy and and what did he do with those he blessed them and gave them to the disciples and there was 5,000 men and they said women and children there could have been 10, 15 000. or 20,000 could have been yes yes what and and what did he do? He fed a couple people, or no? He fed them all, and they had leftovers. Really? How many baskets of leftovers? Twelve. Twelve baskets. Wait a minute. There were twelve disciples. Does that mean maybe they... that's why they had twelve baskets of leftovers? Does that mean they were a basket case? Basket case, yeah. No. You know, you know the disciples when they said that they only had like forty denarii, which is probably a week's wages. Yeah. You know, they asked him, well, "How do we feed these people?" Because uh, the disciples wanted to send them away. They had sat under the teaching of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. uh, our Lord and Savior, and uh, they, they said, he said, they said, send them away because they have to go home and eat. He said, no, no, have them sit down in the grassy parts and we'll feed them. He said, how are we going to feed them with only 40 denarii, which was uh, like a week's wages or something. You know what else? Reminds me how many times do we as people, when we don't have the means, we look to ourselves instead of God for our provision. 
And we always look, how are we going to provide for this? Well, God says to look to Him. That's not, right. Not us. That's right. You know, Sister Emily, when He put that thorn, uh, crown of thorns on His head and the curses were canceled, did you know that someday we'll have a program on work? And work was canceled. We're not to work. Huh, Wait a minute. It says in the Bible that if you don't work, you don't eat. That was what Paul told his people. And that was because he was for a specific reason at that you're, time. You're, you're just giving them a teaser. You'll have to yeah. join in. The, we'll join on in on that. But, but the curses, all the curses were canceled. Uh, just to give you a little tidbit, uh, if you receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you, you become a king. That's correct. A king is, uh, has provision. Wait, wait a minute. I'm, I'm a queen. A queen too. A king and queen. And the thing is, what happens is, he is the King of Kings Lord, and the Lord, Lord of Lords. Lord. So therefore, have you ever heard of a king going to work? None of the kings referenced in the Bible or the, the queens went to work. They were always provided for who? They were provided for from their subjects. And the wicked, the non-believers, are the ones to work for the kings and queens. Mm -hmm. And the Lord's... Uh, so we'll talk about that in a different program. But anyways, let's get back to what, what did we talk Ma about? Matthew 20. Matthew 27, 35. And we're talking about the fifth time that Jesus bled for us. And why did he bleed? His blood is so precious. We're washed in the blood. And okay. Matthew 27, 35. I, I have and it. it was the shedding of blood through the piercing of his hands. It was actually the piercing took place right here. About right here and not right here right about there because otherwise it would have just pulled right through um, my understanding yes and they crucified him and they parted his garments casting lots that it was it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet they parted my garments among them and opened my I can't vesture yes uh, and did they cast lots. People don't recognize that Jesus was naked on the cross. He was naked on the cross. And the thing was, they casted lots for his garments. They didn't cut it up. His garment was very expensive. It was sewn as a single thread. There was no seams in his garment. Sometimes they present Jesus as being this, this uh, poor guy with raggedy clothes. And no, Jesus had a very nice garment. It's very expensive. And like I said, Jesus never asked for money. He didn't need it. And, you know, um, Sister Emily, he, he had a cottage in, in uh, yes, he did. Capernaum, a cottage on the water. Mm -hmm. When he talked to the, when he took the par paraplegic. Okay, the, I'm going to be the player. I'm going to play go the Go ahead. Oh, this uh, is John uh, Wilson. Voice, but, okay, but didn't he say Chime the voice was like, uh, he was naming all the animals. A fox has this, a fox has that. Where does this son of a uh, son of a man have a place to lay his head? I mean, so if that's true, where is that? Where is okay, that? Okay, let's let's mention the reason yeah. for that. He was asked specifically, brother John. He was asked, um, you know, what do you have to to, to 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 provide for us? And he was talking about how birds have nests, foxes have holes, but the son of man has nowhere to lay, lay his head. It was that he was always moving. He was always compassion for the people. He knew that when he did that first miracle of changing the water to wine at the Canaan wedding, which incidentally, Mary, his mother, and Jesus had relatives there at the wedding. It was a relative wedding. He wasn't invited. And he brought some of his disciples because he hadn't picked some of them. But he was explaining that we have to move on. Ever, ever since he did that first miracle, he knew that he was moving towards the cross. Towards the cross, uh, to die on a cross. He said the Son of Man must die on a cross, be buried, raised on the third day. And it was an ex explanation of how he w kept moving. He didn't sit in one place. They kept saying, well, why don't you set up a tent here? And no, he kept moving and going throughout because he knew that he had to establish his ministry preaching the kingdom. He didn't come here to make a religion. He, 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 although he was born in a Jewish family, uh, business family as, as a matter of fact, uh, Joseph was a carpenter and also a builder. 
but that was just to explain that he worked. Reverend Lawrence. Brother John, yes. I think we need to remember too that what we see in his life, Jesus was a giver. He he healed anybody that came to him, and he took care of all these people, and um, the monies that he had, he gave out. He wasn't hoarding. He was giving, 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 and there are, um, the Bible says that he did so many miracles, he did so many things that the, you couldn't even write them down. Oh, that was in the end of John, where he talked about the deity. Right, so. There wasn't enough paper in the world to write down everything he did. So think of all the good things that God did that we won't hear about until we get to heaven. But you know, Sister Emily, it wasn't just what he did on earth. Right. When the, he was explaining that he talked about Jesus' deity, it was before the foundations of the world to the end, all the things that he did even when he went to heaven. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, Jesus did many things that are not written. And the, the reason for these, this, this here called the Bible, okay, B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me, right? Is that the song I goes? stand alone on the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. Yeah, -E. This 66 books, canonized, okay, has one purpose and one, well, actually two purposes. One purpose and another one. The main purpose is to witness who Jesus Christ is. He's the Son of God. I refer to him as God the Son. There's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit lives inside us when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord right. and Savior. But he's God the Son. And uh, uh, it's got one God with three specific what? Persons. Persons. Okay. All right. Now. So when they nailed him to a cross and he was bleeding, um, when they said there was an earthquake sometime in his crucifixion. Was yes. That, was that the after his death? Earthquake, the earthquake happened after he died and the temple came down. The temple fell down? Fell down, yes. Or was it the curtain? And the curtain was ripped from the top to the bottom in what is called the Holy of Holies. Did the temple fall down? Everything. The whole temple level. was leveled? Yep. You couldn't end, then how could they see if the, the curtain was torn? Well, that's what happened first. The curtain was torn from the top down. The only way, and it was like maybe 18 inches or 24 inches thick, woven. And it was very impossible. This is the curtain around what? Around the Holy of Holies, Holies. where the Ark of the Covenant was. Okay, in the Ark of the Covenant, there were what? There was the manna, uh -huh. a pot with manna in it that was still fresh. <laughs> it didn't spoil a word. And there was Aaron's rod. Right. And Aaron was called to the ministry of the Levites, right? And that the, rod. The staff. Yeah, and the staff. And also there was the uh, Ten Commandments. Yes. The law that was in there. And what else was Man there? Manna. There was manna. We put the manna. And uh, there was also, I heard, the goblet. Really? That he drank and cut the new covenant at the... Um, Last Supper. Last Supper, yes. Yes, that was in there. Um, so we were, we were just finishing that he got crucified. He got crucified, okay. Well, his hands. And, 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 and since Dr. Emily was right, it was right here in the wrist. It wasn't in the hands, otherwise the flesh would have been torn. If he had flesh on his hands after being scourged by Pontius Pilate. So what... Um, no, so, we're so now we're on six. His feet were pierced. The blood that was shed through Jesus' pierced feet. And that's Genesis 126. <laughs> 126 and Luke 19. I got Genesis 126. Do you want to get Luke 19? Sure. Okay. Uh, Sister Emily. You know, it's, it's important to understand that the two purposes, one to witness who Jesus Christ is, and the other one was to disciple us, disciple us and teach us morals and ethics. You know the um, uh, Sermon on the Mount? Yes. Was probably the greatest sermon ever preached on ethics and morals. Okay. And, uh, what and verse? it has the last sub it, Go ahead. Uh, Luke 10, 19. I'm getting there. Okay, before you read that, I'm going to read Genesis 1.26. It is a 
favorite of mine, not that all the scriptures in the Bible are my favorite, but it's where God said. You see, God spoke everything into existence except for one thing. Man. Which was man. And I want to say man first, but he made woman from the rib of man. Okay. Well, when he was making Adam, he was just practicing, right? Yeah, he was just practicing. <laughs> <laughs> but, but he made man. And uh, uh, let's, let's read here uh, in Genesis 1.26. And it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Now, what does that mean? And who is let us? God is one person, isn't he? Yep. He's actually three persons in one. In one, right. Uh, my good friend, uh, uh, Jimmy, and I used to go back and forth to uh, Ionia Prison and minister with him the first and fifth uh, Sunday of every month for like nine years. Um, and Jimmy Holder, and he, he would explain it as three in one oil. That's how you can understand the Father's, God the Father, God the Son, and God the I Holy heard Spirit. i another illustration. What's Have you ever that? seen an egg? It has a yolk and uh, the outer. You have three in one. Oh, wow. The shell, uh -huh. the the white, and then the yolk. Yeah. Wow. Can't have an egg without all, all the three. All three, right. Now, if you go and it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image. I like lettuce on BLTs or hamburgers or salads. I don't. I don't you like You don't lettuce. like lettuce? Okay. No. <laughs> Everywhere you see let us in the Bible, in the Word of God, it means the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And it says, let us make man in our image uh, after our likeness and let us let us what? Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. What is dominion? That's total rule. Like a king or a lord. Dominion over the, the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, over the cattle and over uh, the earth, all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. And the biggest creep is Satan. They had authority over Satan. Did, and, uh, was this dominion given to them before or after the fall? It was given to them before they were created. Oh. <laughs> yeah, before they were created. And it says, so God, in 27, so God created man. See, before he created, they created man, it happens in what? He said. Mm -hmm. And then, that's the spiritual, and then it happened in the physical. And God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created a male and female. He created them. Man at that time was like God, male and female. Until he took the rib out of man and fashioned woman. Mm -hmm. Everything, like we mentioned earlier, that God created was through his, their, his speech. And he only created man with his hands out of the dust of the mire. And the world clay. became a better place when, when a woman came into it. When we came into it, that's right. That's right. And, and God did what in 28? 28? He said, he said, and God blessed them. To be blessed is empowered by God to prosper. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And subdue it. Subdue it is important. That means take authority over the earth. And have dominion over all the fish of the sea, over all the fowls of the air, over every living thing that moved upon the earth. You see, God gave man dominion. And when he gave man dominion, he didn't take it back. But he had to send his son... Jesus to correct the problem that man and woman did I by had, sinning. I had to take dominion or authority uh, a couple times, uh, two, three times this week. Um, one person uh, was hearing voices. Oh, that's right. You were telling me about that. How did that work? Um, did you go over to their house? No, I did it over the phone. Over the phone? Wow. And this man uh, had a disease. And he'd uh, been diagnosed. He said, Emily, I'm hearing voices. I'm a Christian. I'm born again. I have the Holy Spirit inside. And they're bothering me at night. I'm hearing them during the day. And so I prayed with them. And no more voices. No more trouble at night. And you bound the, the demonic, spirits demonic spirits 
in the authority. We have, do we have that power to bind the demonic spirits, or yes. do we have God do it for us? Um, God take, says to take the authority that we have in Jesus' name. Oh, that's in Genesis 1, 26 and 27. Yes. Because he gave us authority. He didn't take it back. And then... We have that power. And it says yes. in the Bible that the things that Jesus did, we will do greater things. Then I had a friend who has, uh, lives up in St. Louis, and she was having problems in the church. There was demons in the church. And I remember having a conversation with you, and I thought, well, okay, what am I supposed to do? So I prayed. Oh wait! You asked me. You says, "When can you get around to praying about that?" Right? And then, and then the Holy Spirit convicted you and told you what? I need to pray. Oh wow! Okay. They're gone, and it's like I've talked to a few people. It's like this is normal for a Christian to do. I think it's a downfall on some pastors is they don't teach their people uh, spiritual warfare, and it's a process. It takes time, and I used to not know. You know how to how to cleanse a house or how to um, uh, I'm still learning about demonic warfare. Yeah. But uh, I helped a few people this week. That's wonderful, Sister Emma. That's wonderful. And you know when we get out of bed, when our feet hit the floor, Satan should be trembling. Yes. <laughs> you know. You know. He's not us tremble with Satan, but he should be trembling. He says, oh, he probably called all those demons. Oh, those faith people have gotten out of bed. We get, we're in trouble. I remember when I was still learning, I went to work one day, and a girl came in, and I felt something coming in with her. And I remember calling you, Pastor, there's something that came in with a girl. I, didn't, I couldn't see it. And I said, what do I do? And then you instructed me um, what we should do. The Bible gives us authority, and we need to take that authority and practice with it. Oh, and so if I get a Bible, I have authority? I don't have to do anything else? Oh, no, we need to read it. Okay. Well, I just read it, and, and I don't have anything else to do? No, we need to practice it. Practice it. So I'm going to practice it, I'm going to read it, and I'll have the authority. I'll just have uh, behind the Bible. Well, actually, it's God. It's, it's God's power, not me. Um, do I have to do anything before I do that? We need to be... Uh, Maybe receive Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I think that's a good <laughs> idea. Yeah, but isn't that amazing? But but let's let's we have to what, receive Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and then we study the Bible. Right. What's that verse you wanted me to read? And in in yes, Luke, Luke 10? ten nineteen. And this is about when Jesus' feet were pierced and He bled for us. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. And over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Does that mean that when his feet were pierced, it was talking about us? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Read that one more time. I, I'm excited about that, that we can tread on scorpions. Behold, I give you unto you the power to tread on serpents. That's, I think that's talking about Satan. Yeah. And scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall be by any means hurt you. Now, Reverend Lawrence, yes, um, I don't go out and stand in front of a car and uh, test God. You don't? No, just like I don't. You don't uh, think the car, car would go right through you if you prayed enough? It could, but I, I'm not going to test God. And I think here, just like I wouldn't go and stand on scor scorpions, and I'm not going to go into a snake a pit, uh, snakes. Uh, the, the worst serpent is Satan. But I'm just saying we don't test God. We shouldn't test God. That's, that's important that we not test God. Now, the seventh time oh. that Jesus bled for us was when? Was the blood that was shed through the spear in Jesus' side. You want to read that? That's John 34. John 34. Okay. And you know, it must be everybody out there that's listening to our program believes everything that we're talking about or doesn't believe, they would be calling us, right? And they can call us at 810-250-7365. That's 210-250-7365. That's All Points TV. And you'll be right on the air with us. Or you can dial 513-512-3200. Uh, that is 513-512-3200. You probably see it on the screen. Or you can dial... 513-616-6733. It says right here, 
But one of the soldiers with a spear. Wait, wait, wait. What the so what is it? One of the soldiers? But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came there out blood and water. Now you know what the, the, the importance of that is? Shows that he was dead. He was dead. And I heard that that particular centurion, mm -hmm. when he pierced his side, what did he say? Is it, is it mentioned, referenced after that? I think it is. Okay. What would be the next? Would be the... Um, 35. 35. And he saw, and he that saw, it was bare record, and he recorded, and his record is true, and he knoweth that he saith true, that ye might believe. And I'm, what's the next scripture? For these things were done, that the scripture should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. You know what he was getting ready to do? He pierced his side, right. and he bled water and blood. Right, and the, the custom was to break their legs, yeah, so be, they couldn't push up to they breathe. They couldn't push up to breathe, but he found out that Jesus was already dead, and he was amazed. I think after that, he talked about how... Do you know why he was amazed? Yeah. Um, man did not take God's life, the Son of God's life from him. He gave up his life. He had to give up the ghost in order to die that quickly. Yes. And and the thing was that he was on the cross, I heard, Yes. from the sixth hour to the ninth hour. Yes. Now, in those times, the first hour was 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. 12 o'clock noon was the sixth hour. Okay. So from noon to 3 o'clock... He was on the cross. Yes. At three o'clock, he died. That's right. In three hours. And these people, uh, the Romans, were very experienced in crucifixion deaths. Yes, they were. They they, they were amazed that he, he died so fast that he had to give up the ghost. And when that centurion said he must truly be dead, it is versed in the Bible that he said he must be the son of God. Yes. To die that quickly. So, uh, seven, we want to tell you what seven is. What's seven? Seven is God's number of completion and perfection, both spiritual and physical. And what Jesus did on the cross for us through his death, Reverend Lawrence. Burial and resurrection. People don't realize the importance of the blood. And did you realize that if Virgin Mary had not been a virgin, it would have just been a man dying on a cross. So it the would have been Adam's blood brought through the ages. That's right. That's why is the um, virgin, Mary being a virgin was extremely important because oh. it made him divine. Oh, do you know that? That Joseph and Mary had no sexual relations before Jesus? That's correct. Otherwise, she wouldn't have been a virgin. That's right. And at the same time, when the Holy Spirit hovered over Mary, mm -hmm. he inseminated her with the seed of God. Yes. And if you understand, science will teach you this because we're supposed to believe the scientists. You know, all of us are under this COVID thing, we're supposed to believe the scientists. But the, and we all wear masks all throughout the world. And some of us are under lockdown even today. Some of us are not being able to liberty of meeting with one another, right? That's right. One of us are allowed to go out and get our groceries, you know, that type of thing. But uh, to understand what we're talking about here is to understand that, that Mary was a virgin. Why? So that the Son of God could be born into the world. Born into the world. And that it would be God's seed and not man's. Now, actually the Holy Spirit inseminated Mary behind her hymen. Yes. She was still a virgin when she was having Jesus' seed, right? Now, keep in mind that we're supposed to believe the scientists. That if you look, you can Google, okay? You know, there's three and a half billion, almost four billion people that have a smartphone. Whether an iPhone or an Android or whatever. Or a pad or a computer. 
and you can Google it. Uh, there's going to be another four billion people that are going to have a smartphone in the next four to five years. But the thing is, if you understand the science of birth, the woman provides the womb. The man provides the seed. The seed has the blood in it. Now, Mary's blood did not go into Jesus' body. Just like Mary's or any woman's blood that is pregnant does not go into the child's body. The woman has the father's blood in her. And the men have the father's blood. So I have my father's blood and not my mother's blood in me. You have your father's blood and not your mother's blood in you. That's correct. Okay? And it's the blood of the Father. And that's another reason why the blood of Jesus was so important. And as we're talking about the blood, um, we need to give people an opportunity to receive Jesus. Yes, let's do that right now. Uh, you know, we, I have been told, Reverend Lawrence, every time that you speak about anything, it always defaults to salvation. Well, salvation is what? The becoming, be the becoming beginning, and becoming a child of God. Becoming a child of God, and then you're discipled up. But if you'd like to bow your heads and close your eyes, if you're compelled to do so, God does not force you. And keep in mind, there's no formula to salvation. There's no formula to healing. There's no formula to anything in the Bible other than Jesus Christ. He said, "I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but through me." So bow your heads, close your eyes, and repeat after me. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I thank you. I thank you. For a personal faith. For a personal faith. That you are the Son of God. That you are the Son of God. And my Lord. And my Lord. And my Savior. And my Savior. I believe that you died. I believe that you died. You were buried. You were buried. And you rose on the third day. And you rose on the third day. And because I believe it. And because I believe it. Open your it, eyes, brothers and sisters. Because I believe it. And because I believe it. I'm born again. I'm born again. As you receive me, Jesus. As you receive me, Jesus. I receive you. I receive you. In Jesus name in Jesus and name. all God's children said amen and amen I want you to know something anybody that said that for the first time you can give us a call at the numbers here you can contact us on cities of hope uh, uh, cities of hope ministries.com and we will send a Bible anywhere in the world where you are if we have an address post office box or uh, wherever you are if you have a neighbor has an address that you don't have an address and you're living on the street we will, we will send you a Bible, and then we will disciple you. We will disciple you. Uh, that is important, that after you receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you should be discipled. If you said that for the first time. If you said that uh, to get back on track with God and walking with God, rather than the wide path, but the narrow road, because uh, the narrow road leads to salvation. And uh, if, you, if you just said that to renew what you have, uh, not that you can lose your salvation. There's some of you out there believe that you can lose your salvation. I believe once saved, always saved. And you can't, there's nothing you could do to help have God love you any more, any less than what he does right now. Um, then we'll also send a Bible to you too. And we thank you for listening to our program. We'll be back next week to do this all over again on the 22nd of March. And again, this program was dedicated to my mother, Nabia Sifa and my father Nasib Joseph Sifa um, who loved me very much and I breath breathed my first breath right here in the great city of Flint, Michigan which is ushering in the largest end time revival in the history of the world. You all be blessed. You got anything to say to the people before we leave? No, um, it's just really important to become a child of God. He's not into religion. God doesn't want religion. Anyway, that's it. He wants relationship. Okay, y'all be blessed. Bye-bye.
that the way Jesus loves me. I stand amazed at the way that he can. When he said he loved me forever through all eternity I stand amazed at the way 